sigh. <laughs> Hi, sitting here reading affidavits. Happy to be engaged in work again. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> Meeting with Andy, Andy McCabe, Hilariously, Andy's suggestion was that I should be tied to the thing you're working on. Totally his idea. Holy shit, yes! <laughs> Three exclamation points. Did you get laid yesterday? I didn't. I'm concerned that someone forgot to validate my time or something. <laughs> oh, ha, uh, that's funny. Paid, not laid. <laughs> And suddenly I'm in a really sour mood. Don't you brush me off. I'm wildly good at being a persistent pain in the ass, too. Winky face. <laughs> yes, but I don't need you to be on this. For what it's worth, FWIW, Moffa thinks I should take it. Well, we can't both be wrong. Winky face. <laughs> You two, the smartest people I know in the FBI. Winky face. <laughs> Sigh. And I just failed my veterans' employment training. God, they are so profoundly useless. What time does your first test start? And seriously, don't be nervous. You've totally got this. <laughs> Boo. I do not like your absence as a result of your so-called work. Maybe I should ask to be reassigned, winky face. <laughs> ah, you better not, three exclamation points. <laughs> and Martin O'Malley's a douche. <laughs> Foregone conclusion, but so much more substantive than the Republican debates. I have a real problem with Anglophiles and the whole perception of bringing intellectual greatness to the world. Oh, it was damn cold out this morning. I totally need your shirt and thin gloves and something for my ears. Mm. Hey. I assume going forward that it's okay to send entirely innocuous news articles, right? I just sent one. I hope Paul Ryan fails and crashes in a blaze of glory. Yes, and me too. At some point, the Republican Party needs to pull their head out of their ass. Shows no sign of occurring anytime soon. Check out the balls on France. Just like that, they're conducting airstrikes on Syria. Yeah, but France. <laughs> they're probably dispensing leaflets with insults. <laughs> My UNET password expired, buzzing every 15 minutes, aggravating because I keep thinking it's you. I cannot think of a more qualified person. You will be awesome. Thank you. I'm suddenly really excited, scared, but very happy. Well, don't be scared. I get it. But you're so ready. You've already done the job and worked with him. It's not the job I'm scared about. But I am really scared about balance. O-M-G, sent an email to John I meant to send to you. <laughs> Not bad, except for the odd emoticon. Just blame fat fingers. Send it. Had a dark moment of not being able to go to sleep last night, thinking I wouldn't get the job, and having to save my pride by stepping down if that happened. I didn't feel that way at 10.50 last night. 
That would be a grave injustice, and it would seriously suck. But you'd get through it. People would know it was utter BS. Life would go on, and you'd be stronger for it. I suppose I'm very good at reveling in insecurity. Oh, this is painful annual ethics training. Apparently. <laughs> Apparently, they have way too much time on their hands. Funny, Kasich has long been suspected of being gay. <laughs> Lived with his campaign manager for a long time, until maybe 10 plus years ago, when he married a supermodel wife and immediately popped out kids. Jim canceled lunch, maybe getting coffee at 11 with him, but he offered, but I think he was just being nice. I'm sorry you didn't get to see Jim, but selfishly, I'm happy. <laughs> Fucking marchers making traffic problems. Yeah, some extremely offensive video screens set up in front of district. Thank goodness the director can't read and wasn't paying attention. I truly hate these people. No support for the woman who actually has to spend the rest of her life rearing this child. But we care about life, assholes. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Hi, I like my new job. <laughs> wide, wide awake. 13,742 things to worry about in my new job. Nothing like self-doubt in the dead of night. You were born to do this job. I have zero doubt. You're going to be amazing. Damn, these 12-hour days are rough. It's good preparation for when you're DD. Only if you'll be the GC. <laughs> or DGC, that would work too. Mm. Have a great story for you. Not for here. I'm no prude, but I'm really appalled by this. Trump called him the P word. The man has no dignity or class. He simply cannot be president. Republican Party is in utter shambles. When was the last competitive ticket they offered? How the fuck can Trump be a Republican? <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. Still, he is so very interesting. <laughs> he may win the nomination. Good for Hillary. It is. Would he be a worse president than Cruz? Trump? Yes, I think so. I'm not sure. <laughs> OMG, he's an idiot. He's awful. America will get what the voting public deserves. That's what I'm afraid of. God, Hillary should win 100 million to zero. <laughs> hey, do you know if you're close? Oh, walking to my office now. You didn't need to run. You said come soon. I am responsive. <laughs> I want to talk all about this with you. Yeah, same here. Meanwhile, I just feel like throttling DOJ. So look, you say we text on that phone when we talk about Hillary because it can't be traced. You were just venting, BC, 
You feel bad that you've done so much, but it can't be helped right now. Holy shit. Cruz just dropped out of the race. It's going to be a Clinton-Trump race. Unbelievable. What? Exclamation point, question mark, exclamation point, question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> You heard right, my friend. Now the pressure really starts to finish Clinton emails. It sure does. We need to talk about follow-up call tomorrow. We still never have. Are you going straight to DOJ? Yep, in ODAG's car now. Wow, exclamation point, exclamation point. Double fancy fancy. <laughs> Winky face. <laughs> Do you have five seconds to call on Clinton emails? CNN breaking. FBI has interviewed aides quietly at FBI building, specifically Huma. Huma's attorney called afterwards. He's talking to her and calling back. Fun. Yeah. Wonder if they're raising hell about all the media stuff. All seemed very pro-Clinton camp. Turn on NBC. What is it? Guccifer, sleazy Romanian. They all are. <laughs> no wonder he's as brusque as he is. And those Romanians aren't even gypsies. Seriously? I kind of hate them. But they have the crookedness of the Russians with the entitledness of the Italians, yuck. <laughs> Your mission, Agent Page, should you choose to accept it. Totally off topic, but I'm kind of bummed. Randy offered to take Andy uh, to the offsite using a Black Hawk on Monday. I've never been in a Black Hawk or any helicopter at all. <laughs> well, well, I really hope you can go. There's got to be enough room. Looks like I'm coming to work tomorrow. That really sucks. I'm sorry. That isn't fair to you. I'm angry and I'm venting to you as a friend. <laughs> oh, Jesus, I have something to tell you. You know how to get my attention. <laughs> yeah, well, this will. Tease. <laughs> Winky face. <laughs> July 2nd. Oh, boy. Correct. F. Glenn Beck. Agreed. I really like David Brooks. <laughs> hey, see email. Can you call me? Now we're talking about Clinton and how a lot of people are holding their breath, hoping. All caps. Did you tell him that you are the lead on that case? Your dad know you're heading up the case yet? Great. 10,000 emails came in requiring us to respond to proposed gun legislation tonight. How we make law in this country is offensive and irresponsible. I know it is. It's why I loathe the Congress. <laughs> Pope went to Armenia and talked about genocide. Turkey pissed. <laughs> I want to thank you for today. My self-interest aside, thanks for your advocacy and everything you do every day. Jim Comey gave me another big arm around the shoulder hug after meeting Lynch on Wednesday. He's proud of you. I think it's really cute. <laughs> are, you, are you kidding me? Duck Dynasty and now Scott Bayo? Ridiculous. What are you talking about? Wait, is, is that who is speaking at the convention? Charles in charge? <laughs> 
That's the best they can do? I'm laughing my fucking ass off. It's pathetic. That's unbelievable. My God. Thank God it's not on. It's on. PBS. Republican snark. No, I will not be sucked in. The douchebags are about to come out. <laughs> and oh, Bob Dole. This is pathetic. God, production of PBS sucks tonight. Oh, wow, Donald Trump is an enormous douche. <laughs> How was Trump, other than a douche? Oh, the whole thing is like living a bad dream. God, it's, it's just a two-bit organization. I do so hope his disorganization comes to bite him hard in November. It has to, right? Right? <laughs> Panicked. Hopefully you get home in time for crazy-ass grain storage pyramid Ben Carson tonight. <laughs> Hell, look at the top six. I think the downfall of Rome was like this. Mitch McConnell always reminds me of a turtle. <laughs> My god, the crowd looks so bored. And Paul Ryan's a jerk. <laughs> Trump is a disaster. I have no idea how destabilizing his presidency would be. About to read the Clinton email letter while I listen to Cory Booker. He's doing very well. Boy, Bernie better not F this up. Winky face, smiley face. Jesus Christ, how can he talk that long? Question mark, exclamation point, question mark, exclamation point, question mark, question mark, exclamation point. <laughs> Congrats on a woman nominated for president in a major party. About damn time. That's cute, thanks. <laughs> Chills. Just because I'm a homer for American democracy that way. Yeah, it's pretty cool. She just has to win now. I'm not gonna lie. I got a flash of nervousness yesterday about Trump. I want to believe the path you threw out for consideration in Andy's office, Dash, that there's no way he gets elected, Dash. But I'm afraid we can't take that risk. It's like an insurance policy in the unlikely event you die before you're 40. All right. <clears throat> text from, I want to go to August 15, 2016, quote, I want to believe the path you threw out in Andy's office, dash, that there is no way he gets elected, dash, but I'm afraid it's like an insurance policy in the unlikely, we can't take that risk, it's like an insurance policy in the unlikely event you die before you're 40, unquote. And that was Agent Struck to you. That's correct. All right. Quote, I want to believe the path you threw out in Andy's office, unquote. Did you understand the quote, unquote, you to be you? <laughs> Lisa Page. I'm sure that it is. And Andy would be whom? Andy McCabe. Is there any chance it could be any other Andy? No, I don't think so. How long did this conversation last? I have no idea. You recall anybody else being present? Typically, um, I imagine that there were. Andy and I would have certainly had meetings individually. It would have, but because FBI is as hierarchical as it is, it would have been unusual for Pete, who at this point was probably still a section chief, to have been in a meeting without at least his superior, his boss, or even his boss's boss. That's just how we operate. We tend to bring the whole chain of command. Hmm. What do you make of a dash? <laughs> I want to believe the path you threw out in Andy's office, dash, 
that there was no way he gets elected. What does that clause, quote, that there was no way he gets elected, unquote, modify? I don't remember. And this is so, I'll be honest, was, I don't remember precisely this event or this <clears> meeting. <throat> And in fact, I went back and some time ago looked at a calendar and there was nothing on the calendar that there was sort of a for formal meeting. But I, I do sort of know the sentiment that the text was meant to reflect, if I could just explain that. Sure, sure. If, I, I just want you to keep in mind, we are 15 days into a then nascent counterintelligence investigation. Yes, yes, I understand If that, that helps put it into context. It definitely does. <laughs> so upon the opening of the Crossfire Hurricane investigation, we had a number of discussions up through and including the director regularly, in which we were trying to find an answer to the question, right? Which is, is there someone associated with the campaign who is working with the Russians in order to obtain damaging information about Hillary Clinton? And given that it is August before the election, we were very aware of the speed and the sensitivity that we needed to operate under. So if he is not elected, then to the extent that the Russians were colluding with members of his team, we're still going to investigate that. But if he becomes president, that totally changes the game. Can you? Can you explain what you meant by that text? Yeah, absolutely. And so in the context of what just said about the path, my, my point here, Dash, and there has been a tremendous amount read into this that is absolutely inaccurate. The point I was making there is it is unlikely that you will die before you're 40, but you still act in a way that addresses that possibility. That is an analogy to somebody, uh, to somebody saying, hey, look, every pollster and talking head thinks that Secretary Clinton is going to be elected. And my responding, well, that may be true, but nevertheless, we need to responsibly investigate this in the unlikely event, based on the polls and the pundits and the experts, the candidate Trump is elected. And I'm looking at a text that you sent to Special Agent Strzok, quote, Trump's not ever going to become president, right? Unquote, right? And then Strzok, the agent who originated this counterintelligence investigation, who is a point of contact, who drafted the initiating document, he responds, quote, no, no, he's not. We'll stop it, unquote. Right, well, <laughs> so that's a different sort of context. <laughs> which I'm happy to explain. The one thing I'll note, the reason Pete opened it is that it was a Sunday. So the reason he's both the originator and like the approver is because it was a Sunday and there's nobody around. July the 31st is a Sunday, you are correct. All right. And your response was, no, period, no, no, he's not, period, we'll stop it. What did you mean by quote, unquote, no? <laughs> no was my, my recollection of no. And let me just say that there's been a lot written about this text. And what I can tell you, Congressman, is in no way does that suggest that I did or even considered taking any action to. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Agent Strzok, before we get to what you didn't mean by quote unquote no, how about we settle on what you did mean by it and then we can discuss the entire universe of what you didn't mean by it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, the precise question was, Trump's not ever going to become president, right? And then if you miss that, quote unquote, right, she put again, quote unquote, right, <laughs> with a question mark. And the next word from you is, quote unquote, no. So what did you think the question was? <laughs> I thought that question was her personal question as to whether or not he would become president. Mm. My answer was my personal belief that I did not think he would be. Well, then why did you say, quote, no, he's not, unquote? Why didn't you say, quote, no, I don't think he's going to. No, I don't think he'll win the Electoral College. No, I don't think he'll do well in Ohio, unquote. Why did you say, quote, no, he's not, unquote? Sir, because my recollection of that text, which I don't recall specifically writing, uh, is, I, I, it is late denying, night. Are you denying writing it? Oh, I'm not, I'm not denying writing it at all. Okay, quote, no, no, he's not, unquote, he's not. What? Go, going to be my, my belief that he is not going to be okay. president. Well, stop it. <clears throat> Who's, quote, unquote, we? Honestly, I don't know that I had any specific... Well, who wrote it? Well, my, my sense who was... Who wrote it? The United States and the American people would who not... Who wrote it? Who wrote the quote-unquote I wheel? wrote it. I wrote it, okay. Congressman. Okay. And it really is not that complicated of a question. It's not. All right. So, we are less than 10 days into an investigation that you are at a minimum a major participant in and perhaps running yourself, and you are talking about stopping the presidency of the person that you were supposed to be dispassionately and objectively investigating? I, I can... Well, what, what, what's the question, sir? <laughs> True. Is what true? <laughs> I'm asking you to rephrase. The whole predicate. We are, we are less than, we are eight days into an investigation that you either ran or were a major participant in, and you're supposed to be dispassionately and objectively looking at the facts. And you have already declared that you were going to stop the presidency of the Republican nominee. No, sir, that is, that is not what I've said. What I have said is my personal belief that the American people, I, I did not believe, would elect the president. That is fundamentally different from what you just said and suggested. Well, we'll let them. Now, you left the Mueller investigation team at some point in time. Give me the circumstances about why. Sure. Uh, I participated in the first briefing for Bob Mueller upon sort of giving him an overview of like, here's what we've got. And at the end of the briefing, he went to Mr. McCabe, who at the time was acting director, and said, who is that woman? And he said, that's Lisa, she works for me. And he said, I want her on the team. And Andy said, okay. And so he came to me and said, Bob wants you to join the team. And I said, I don't want to. And he said, well, you don't say no to Bob Mueller. OK, OK, OK. So the point I'm trying to get at, the text messages had not become public. No, 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 to, uh, 30 seconds, I, I, I'm going to get there. You bet. I was very hesitant to join the Mueller team because I had already worked two incredibly demanding years with Andy and I wanted a life back. And I wanted to parent and be at home and be around. And so I went to Bob Mueller to talk to him about it. And so as a compromise, I offered a 45-day detail and so I joined his team for 45 days to sort of help them stand up with the understanding that he wanted me, he wanted me full time. He, you know, uh, thought I had something to add. But at the end of the 45 days, I just, you know, d uh, despite, you know, it being an impressive crew that he had assembled, just wanted a life back.
Jesus, you should read this, and Trump should go F himself. God, that's a great article. And thanks for sharing. And F Trump. <laughs> Maybe you're meant to stay where you are because you're meant to protect the country from that menace. Thanks. Of course, I'll try to approach it that way. I can protect our country at many levels. <laughs> Was told the board went the way Bill wanted, but still needs the director's blessing. Yay. Come down to my office for lunch. I'm going to blow your mind. <laughs> All right. Ah. I want to switch over to March of 2016. It's a text from you to Special Agent Peter Strzok. Mm. I'm sorry, what's the date, sir? March 3rd. 2016. Okay. Quote, God, Trump is a loathsome human, unquote. Yeah, I see that. What did you mean by that? <laughs> I don't recall. <laughs> well, what does the word, quote, unquote, loathsome mean? I have absolutely no idea what particular thing was uttered that I was responding to, but this is the one where uh, I'll say that, you know, um, in which the, you know, genitalia size is discussed. Now, let's flip to May of 2017. This is actually a text from Special Agent Struck to you. Quote, and we need to open the case we have been waiting on while Andy is acting, unquote. Who is Andy? Andy is Andy McCabe. And this is what, a day after Director Comey has been fired? That's correct. I've been instructed by FBI counsel that what I can say is the decision to open the case was not about who was occupying the director's position. <laughs> All right, we'll try it again. This is from Special Agent Strzok to you, quote, and we need to open the case we've been waiting on while Andy is acting, unquote. You, I think, if I understood your answer correctly, you've been authorized by the Bureau to tell us that the case was not contingent upon who the director of the FBI was? That is correct. Which you would have to have a lot of creativity to be able to read that text and reach that conclusion. <laughs> I should really take off the whole damn day. So go ahead. I'd obviously love to have you at the director brief, but if not, I'll stop by and give you an in-person debrief. <laughs> Good Lord. Talk about an unexpected and unpleasant blast from the past. Just went to a Southern Virginia Walmart. I could smell the Trump support. <laughs> Yeah, it's scary real down here. Vomit. Vomit. Vomit, vomit, vomit. I will not read about Snowden tonight. Seriously, don't read the article. But Jesus, V-O-M-I-T. And while I hate it, I kind of want to walk over to the old post office and see what they've done with it. Want to go with me? The new Trump Hotel? No. Funny quote from my cousin-in-law. No way Trump will drop out. Hey, Republicans, how does it feel to carry something to term? Oh. 
Well, on November the 3rd, you did text, quote, Jill Stein and Gary Johnson are F asterisking everything up to, end quote. Does F asterisking mean fucking? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what did you mean by that? <laughs> My sense was, again, from a personal perspective, looking at the race, the presidential race, that a variety of actors were causing debates and shifts and movement in a way that was causing core messaging or just general sentiment to be moved and shifted. Well, whose chances did you think Stein and Johnson were hurting, Clinton's or Trump's? I believe Clinton's. Well, I could almost take from reading this text that you wanted her to win. Congressman, like many agents, I have, I had certainly strong held political opinions that are personal. There have been presidents that I've liked that have been elected, and there have been presidents that I didn't particularly care for that were elected. So it's fair to say you are a Clinton supporter? Congressman, I, I think that's clear from the reading of the text, certainly that I was not a Trump fan. Well, just to be on the safe side, we'll get you to say it anyway, even if it is clear from the reading of the text. <laughs> you are a Clinton supporter? Sir, my personal perspective <laughs> was that I supported Hillary Clinton, Secretary Hillary, Clint Hillary Clinton, ahead of then-candidate Trump. And when did you decide to start supporting her? Did you support her in the primary? No, I, I know you, again, this makes me uncomfortable, that the legislative branch is inquiring about the personal views of an executive- Well, your texts make us pretty damn uncomfortable, too. <laughs> Well, four days later, I think, referencing an article entitled, quote, victory by Mr. Trump remains possible, unquote, you said, quote, OMG, this is fucking terrifying, unquote. What does, quote, unquote, OMG stand for? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> quote, oh my God. This is fucking terrifying, unquote. What was terrifying about a victory by Trump? What did you mean by, quote, fucking terrifying, unquote? The, the prospect that candidate Trump might be elected? And just so I'm right in my mind here, this is, this is why you were dispassionately, objectively investigating whether or not he colluded slash coordinated with a foreign actor to interfere with the election? No, those are independent things. <laughs> Is it the same time? Not whether or not you conflated the two. That's a separate question. Were those going on at the same time? So, in November, when you said it would be fucking terrifying for him to become president, you were investigating whether or not he had colluded slash coordinated slash otherwise conspired with a foreign actor to interfere with the election. Yes. On March the 14th, Lisa Page texted you, quote, finally two pages away from finishing all the president's men. Did you know the president resigns in the end, unquote? <laughs> and you replied, quote, what? God, that we should be so lucky, unquote. In March of 2017, were you still working on the Russia investigation? Yes. What did you think? The president should resign, Mr. Strzok? What was the cause? What would be the, the cause of his resignation? I think this is a figurative, <laughs> snarky, tongue-in-cheek remark. Mm. It's not some legal analysis of a violation of the viability of any active impeachment or crime. This is merely a personal, snarky expression of my personal belief and nothing else. You just referenced four different ways of referring. Let's, let's just go with the head of the executive to the executive branch. You think the head of the executive branch resigning is just a snarky thing to say? I think my personal opinion was that I had no love lost for Mr. Trump. Were you investigating what Russia did and with whom, if anyone they did it with, in March of 2017? Yes. And you still thought it'd be a good idea for him to... I, I, but yet you're somehow able to separate your professional views from your private views. Absolutely. When every agent does working every case, what every agent working every case does every single day. Well, let's get to that. 
<laughs> you texted, quote, me and this case, unquote. What case would you be referring to, Mr. Strzok? What, what's, the, what's the date on that? May the 18th. Anything important happened around May the 17th or 18th that you may recall? Yeah, so at that time, it was right around the time that Special Counselor Mueller was appointed, I believe. Now, when you say, quote, right around the time, unquote, how about the day after? Okay. <laughs> so the day after Special Counsel Mueller was appointed, you're still working on the existing Russia investigation at this point. I am. Have you moved over to the Special Counsel team yet? No, I have not. Quote, for me and this case, unquote, what case were you referring to? At that time, the Russia collusion investigations. Quote, I personally have a sense of unfinished business. I unleashed it with mid-year exam. Now I need to fix it and finish it, unquote. What is the quote, unquote, it? Congressman, I don't, we, we did this earlier and I don't want to get into parsing individual words. Well, actually I do, I do. <laughs> I do, Agent Strzok. That's why I asked you, what does quote unquote it mean? You wrote it. What does it mean? The text, I'm telling you, Congressman, is my sense that we had done mid-year exam, the Clinton investigation. We saw, and now it's been declassified, and this is me, but the intelligence community watching the government of Russia take the results and the existence of that examination and use it to influence the election. They did this through social media, they did it through other means. And my involvement in that case, watching that case go from start, who by the way has a credible to, to finish, watching a hostile nation, allegations is colluding with members of a different campaign, watching that information be weaponized by the government of Russia and used in the context of our election. My feeling was, I've worked through with John and others, been in this from the beginning, mid-year, we, we came to a conclusion. The government of Russia has taken this and created this entire mess. And I want to sit there and see this through and stop the government of Russia from interfering in the elections of the United States of America. Hmm. Whoa. Well, what? What I find so fascinating about that answer, Special Agent Strzok, is what you also texted on May the 18th, which is you, quote, if I thought it was likely, you and I both know the odds are nothing. I hesitate in part because of my gut sense and be there, no question, concern, dash, dash. There's no big, quote, unquote, there, there, unquote. What's not there? The context of that quote, as I looked at it, at the time, at the allegations, I was not certain at the time, one, if there was any sort of illegal activity going on, the nature of that. We had yet to determine, you know, was it going on? Was it coordinated? Was this a bunch of individual opportunists acting out of their own personal motives? And where that range of activity may, not, uh, may lie and, and not knowing that. And I find that interesting because on exactly the same day you texted those other things, you said, quote, who gives a fuck? One more AD versus an investigation leading to impeachment, unquote. <laughs> Sounds to me like you've already made up your mind. <laughs> Impeachment of whom? <laughs> That's not true. Impeachment <laughs> of whom? Well, that would have been impeachment of Trump, but the text For what? clearly... But the text clearly does not say, quote, unquote, will. My sense was it might. That's undefined in the text. And I had not prejudged or concluded that at all. Well, four days later, this is you texting to Lisa Page. Quote, no, I'm more replaceable. I'm torn, I think. <laughs> I'm the best for it, but there are others who, then you, are in this. This is, this is yours, plus can. Okay, you're different and more unique. Leaving a special counsel, having been a special counsel, resulting in an impeachment as an attorney is very different than leaving as an investigator. <laughs> Unquote. There you are, four days into Special Counsel Mueller's probe, talking impeachment again, Special Agent Strzok. This is four days after Special Counsel's probe has been announced. The day it was announced, you referenced impeachment. Four days later, you referenced impeachment. It sounds, I guess, to someone who might be a little bit cynical that 
you had already made up your mind about how you wanted it to end. Is that true? I had absolutely not. <laughs> Did you read this? She's an incredibly impressive woman. The Obamas in general, really. While he has certainly made mistakes, I am proud to have had him as my president. Reading the most depressing lead story about Trump in the New York Times, and couldn't be prouder, sadder of First Lady's comments. You got to watch the debates. Honestly, I don't want to. It's not worth the stress to me. I cannot believe what I'm hearing. I am riled up. <laughs> Trump is a fucking idiot. <laughs> is unable to provide a coherent answer. All caps. I can't pull away. What the fuck happened to our country, Lise? I don't know. But we'll get it back. We're America. We rock. <laughs> Donald just said bad hombres. <laughs> Chris Wallace is a turd. <laughs> Hot damn. Hillary is throwing down saying Trump in bed with Russia. Sigh. I'm sorry, she could do so much better, but she's just not getting traction. I'm so damn mad, Lisa, and disgusted and disappointed. Trump just said what the FBI did is disgraceful. Watching the post-debate commentary. Vaguely satisfying to see Megyn Kelly, who had Botox and looks horrible, <laughs> utterly going after Trump. <laughs> Deputy Director, 100% supportive, re your idea. Was grateful for the suggestion. I'm sorry I couldn't give you credit. <laughs> Article is out but hidden behind paywall, so can't read it. Wall Street Journal, boy, that was fast. Should I find it and tell the team? No, I think not. I need to send. Jesus, Pete, then fine. Send it to everyone you know. What the F difference does it make to anyone on the team? Is there some investigative step to take, some mitigation measure? All caps, it's on the internet. Five exclamation points. Which you only know about because I told you it was there. You told me it was there 30 minutes after it went up. Why are you angry? Because it's critical of Andy? That's even more reason to get the word out. Just a tip. It's not the way to engender goodwill by doing a good deed and then rubbing a fucking nose in it. Why do I send noteworthy articles at all, Lisa? Should I wait on all of those? Should I treat ones accusing the FBI of stuff specially? Hold those? Are you upset because you think this points to you? Because if I waited that 20 minutes, two hours, whatever time, would that be okay? Yeah, and I told you a grand total of two minutes after I learned it was up from Andy. And if you had actually read your text instead of desperately trying to be first, you'll see that us said no. I don't think you should send it. None of this is hard to understand, which is why I'm asking you why you're so damn angry at this. All caps, literally every other significant article we've treated this way. I believe you've betrayed my trust. If I thought I was wrong or had made a mistake, I would just say so, thanks. I hate this case. Let's talk about this later. Right.
Christ, it's there. Lead on frickin' marketplace. Rebicki just called to check in. He's very clearly, 100% believes that Andy should be recused because of the perception. God. Our statement affected the stock market. This is all Matt. Yeah, I saw that. Makes me feel way less bad about throwing him under the bus in the forthcoming CF article. Here, an article to share. Okay, now I'm getting angry. Sorry, utterly terrible day. I'm not sure I can identify one single redeeming thing about it. The Bureau doesn't deserve us. <laughs> You can come hang out in 4012 with me. I have remnants of Cubota chips and salsa. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, just talk to Lou. Remind me? Great. I can't wait to hear his thoughts. Oh, it wasn't his thoughts, though he supports Andy, by the way. It's who and what people said slash asked him. I want to know now. This is kind of shitty of you to hang out there. Sorry. Really? You're not going to tell me now? Not on this. I message in a bit. <sighs> He's going down to talk to the boss. It's not looking good. Lots to share. All right. Let me move forward to May 18th of 2017, which is to put it in context, the day after Bob Mueller has been appointed special counsel. And Peter Strzok texted you and said, quote, for me in this case, I personally have a sense of unfinished business. I unleashed it with the MYE Clinton investigation. Now I need to fix it and finish it, end quote. The person reading it might come to the conclusion, the fix, it means Fix the outcome, change the outcome, stop Donald Trump, finish it. I think it sort of unfinished business to me really just reflects who Pete is, which he's a leader. <laughs> he cares about Russia in particular. It has in many ways dominated his career and wanted to finish out the investigation, whatever the outcome. Well, based on that answer, though, it does sound like as the lead investigator, you took it to mean he was saying the odds are nothing, and as the best counterintelligence agent, Peter Strzok had a gut <laughs> sense and concern that there's no big, quote unquote, there, there. I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> <sighs> With respect to any collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. Right. And uh, so he is the best investigator. So if someone is going to find it, <laughs> it's going to be him. And so I think that this is just a reflection of like, there are no bad choices here. You know, there is no wrong move. You are good at what you do. You will do well wherever you are. Just think, it's like you're going to do a Russian investigation. Like, he worries, he overthinks. Good, you're good at what you do. And so I think that this is just like, you know, an attempt to sort of, there's just no wrong choices here. <laughs> So, 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 so that's whether he remains in his current position? Yes. Or he does something else to try to get a promotion. At either level, he would be doing something he loves. The country is winning because he's protecting it from foreign threats. <laughs> And 
And in the next text, in the next text, you say, quote, I know it will too, but it's just a job. It's not a reflection of your worth or your quality or smarts, unquote. Does that add any context to what you were talking about? Yes. So, right. We're both smart, hard-working people, but we both have a lot of self-doubt. <laughs> and so, this is a reflection of, and, uh, but I, this is not to intrude too much on his own personal business, a reflection of like, do I put in for it? What if I don't get it? And like, you know, just like sort of the insecurity that comes, I think, with taking a chance at something that maybe is a little bit out of reach. And so this to me, this is to me just trying to sort of remind him that it's like a job is a job. You are good at what you do. It, it doesn't matter whether you get it or not. You are still, you know, of your worth. <laughs> and I want you to look at the text that Peter Strzok sent to you that says, quote, and damn, this feels like the other one did too, but that was momentous because this matters to ensure we didn't F something up. This matters because this all caps, MATTERS. So super glad to be on this voyage with you, end quote. End in all caps, period, quote. Do you see that? I do. And I agree whole, wholly with the uh, sentiment, to be honest with you. The Clinton investigation was whether she mishandled. It matters, but it does classified information. That's important. Not matter like a person associated with a presidential campaign receiving and potentially accepting, which we didn't know, obviously, but the risk that somebody had received and accepted an offer of assistance from Russia, which I view as our sort of most treacherous adversary. This, so this one was a more significant, more concerning investigation and unquestionably one which was more threatening to our national security. Okay, okay, so, so as I read this though, and I realize this is Peter Strzok, but when he says, quote, this matters because this matters, so super glad to be on this voyage with you, unquote, it doesn't sound, it sounds like he's happy. If you're super glad, it, like, like if he's stressed, it sounds like he's happy. That's a personal comment, sir. What's that? That's a personal comment. I don't know what you mean, <laughs> but explain that to me. That's a reflection that, okay, the mid-year investigation is over. So he's going back to kind of his day job, right? I'm going back to my day job, and now we have a new job, investigation which will necessarily involve regular contact. <laughs> the New York Times probability numbers are dropping every day. I'm scared for our organization. Stein and Moron Johnson are effing everything up too. Well, why don't we go 10 days forward, Mr. Strzok, and see if we can put a little clarity on this, whether or not you're talking about Trump or sources and methods. Quote, just went to a Southern Virginia Walmart, could all caps smell the Trump support? Unquote. What did it smell like? <laughs> Sir, that text is meant to convey my sense of how radically different, even within the state of Virginia where I live, that going from Northern Virginia down to Southern Virginia, how different the population was in their support for the presidential candidates and congressional 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, I get that, Agent Strzok. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't come anywhere near what you actually typed. <laughs> <clears throat> My question, to refresh your recollection, was, what did it smell like? You're the one who wrote that you could smell the Trump support. You didn't write anything about how Northern Virginia is different from Southern Virginia and how the <laughs> politics may be different in the bluer parts of the state. That would have been great if you had actually written that. That's not what you wrote. You wrote, you can smell the Trump support, and my question to you is, what did it smell like? <laughs> Congressman, that phrase was used as an analogy to describe what I saw is the vast demographic difference between the electorate in Southern Virginia and Northern Virginia. Okay, well, that's not These what... are conversational private texts. These are not statements for the record. These are not any sort of process by which I was conveying my intent and meaning. This is a conversation done electronically. So is it your... <sighs> All caps. I want to watch this with you. Trump about to get off his plane. Going to pour myself a glass of wine. Impressive in its accuracy. OMG, this is fucking terrifying. Mrs. Clinton's chance of losing is about the same as the probability that an NFL kicker misses a 38-yard field goal. Trump won North Carolina. <laughs> CNN projecting Florida for Trump. Damn. And there it is. O-M-G. <laughs> I am so depressed. Honestly, I don't know if I can eat. <laughs> I am very nauseous. I am extremely depressed. Talk to you later. God, I'm really effing depressed. Having a really tough time with the election this morning. <laughs> I bought all the president's men, figured I needed to brush up on Watergate. Meanwhile, we have our task at hand. Good God, I'm worried, racial tensions, one thing that is going to suck about my new office, everyone is going to know how late I get in. Yep. Should I move my seat next to yours? For me and this case, I personally have a, a case of unfinished business. I unleashed it with the Clinton emails. Now I need to fix and finish it. With director gone and Andy leaving, who says I get a promotion, another promotion, from deputy assistant director? We should stop having this conversation here. God, we're a good team. I just think we're both ready for a change, truly. That's definitely true. Pete, let's talk about this tomorrow. Okay, bye Lisa. Hope some sleep brings clarity. America needs you, Lise. <laughs> I'm still really stressed out. I, I feel like an imposter. There's no way I can live up to their expectations. Lise, you're gonna be great. But I'm not a real lawyer anymore. They have no idea. Driving to work in business wear because Mueller. Oh, Lord. You meeting them? I'm proud of you in a million ways. I'm, a, I'm proud of you and admire you. Sleep well, Lisa. What am I doing? Just padding my resume? Doing something meaningful, historic. You okay? Great. Rachel Maddow just listed 
by name each of the people the director listed as having discussed the matter with. I was the only one they hadn't identified yet, but they're still working on it. Oh crap, welcome to the club. How are you feeling about it? Not happy about it, but obviously nothing I can do about it. Washington Post picked your name up in an online blog citing Wired, and you're on Wikipedia. Oh, Jesus. And The Guardian has a reference to me now which is completely exaggerated and overblown. Ooh, smiley face, Link. <laughs> Guardian suggests I am a Russian organized crime expert. It's ridiculous. You saw you're in the print New York Times, right? <laughs> Please don't ever text me again.